Now, a little bit more on vaccines. The five South African scientists from the immunotherapy company GenLab in Tebeja have been working for the past 10 months in developing a local COVID-19 vaccine. It is called Shantivax and is currently undergoing preclinical testing. GenLab describes Shantivax as a next generation vaccine because it evolved from current vaccines in the hope it'll be more effective against COVID-19. Councillor Lynchetti, the Chief Executive Officer of GenLab, joins us now to talk about this. Councillor, thanks for being with us. Welcome. Good morning. All right, Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. Talk to us a little bit more about this. What, what I mean, I, I, I sort of read the introduction, but I think it needs a little bit of a better explanation. What is this all about? Well, you know, this is actually something that's been, uh, we've been doing for quite a long time right now. And um, we've basically done this quite independently. Um, and it's basically a group of scientists, both locally, uh, with our partners in Denmark, Immunitrack. Um, and it, it was, um, you know, something that we feel very passionate about. And, you know, it's a group of scientists that put their heads together. And we watched the evolution from the very beginning. And we saw, uh, you know, what we would have considered mistakes being put into the market. And, uh, you know, eventually it's now become quite established um, that these are, these mistakes have consequences, side effects, and not the best efficacy. Um, you know, the virus has evolved into variants, and um, that was not taken into account. Uh, Shantivax addresses all of these issues. Um, and it, we felt that now that there was a um, lot of data that was published and given on in January from Johns Hopkins and a couple of other institutions, that T cells and antibodies are required for a vaccine to be effective. Uh, you know, we had this. We had this concept, and we had the designs, and you know, and we, now we have, we have, the, have the prototype getting it ready for preclinical. So we, we're happy with this confirmation. Mm, mm. So, uh, but yeah. let's let's sort of look at this because I mean, you have got the major medical companies that are working on this, whether we say AstraZeneca, Pfizer, right. uh, Johnson & Johnson. I mean, there's, there's a host of them. Now, yeah. you're saying, obviously, we know that there are side effects with any vaccine. Obviously, this was developed in, in record timing, but it appears that the rollouts are going pretty well around the world. Uh, I mean, we're seeing many countries that have, have gone and, and done millions of doses around the world, and it seems to be going yeah. quite well. What is it that you are concerned about and where does your sort of idea come in to try and mitigate other factors, even though they have sort of come in and tried to help the other variants that are coming, which it is showing that they are effective against? Well, I think firstly we know that some vaccines do not work well against the variants. That's quite well established. Um, reports are increasing um, I hope this is not a shock to you, but there have been incidents with these vaccines causing uh, facial paralysis or Bell's palsy. That's one of the, the, the major side effects, and there's been numerous other side effects. And secondly, um, you know, the dosage and the amount of dosage just keep having to increase. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I'm not going to criticize the other vaccine, but other to say that those are concerns. And in my mind, you know, you need to have to stimulate the immune system on multiple levels and use multiple targets. So what makes Shantivax a bit different? Um, previous vaccines have uh, looked at the S protein as a target. Um, and now we're getting one or two guys coming forward and saying, here's the S and the N protein. There are four proteins, structural proteins, on the surface of the virus that are visible to the immune system, if you want to say that. The, and um, they're called the S, the E, and the M proteins, for short, um, uh, you know, but uh, we have all four. Hmm. Um, and we've taken that into consideration. And our partners have, uh, our work, our, you know, have expertise in that. And, you know, we have generated data. Hmm. Um, we, I, I strongly, uh, there are not many vaccines that sit within the mucosa. There's been one or two, uh, but ours will sit in the mucosa of the lung, the actual lung lining. You know, so you know it will it will it will be ready for the virus when it attacks. You know, um, I'm not gonna I'm not going to criticize um, 
what, what's happening. But we do believe that ours is the next generation. It's an evolution because, you know, the, the, the cracks in the armor are showing. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I think it's, it's, it's a great initiative from our side. Yeah, I, I was fully aware of the Bell's palsy and also the facial paralysis. I know that that was, I think, during yeah. one of the Moderna trials, but it was something that happened that apparently people do get over a very small amount of people. Look, every vaccine does come with some form of a side effect, and we, we do. We are fully aware that that does happen, but I suppose we, we can't really talk to other vac vaccines when we're focusing in on what you are actually coming up with. So... Perhaps you can yeah. tell us where, where you're at. I mean, has this um, gotten to a point well, uh, where you're about to start human trials or have you started human trials? No, no, we have not started human trials. Um, exactly for the reasons you just mentioned. Yeah. You know, people say that uh, vaccines come with side effects. Not necessarily true. Some vaccines don't have side effects. That's the first thing. Uh, some vaccines stimulate multiple levels of the immune system. That's the second thing. Um, and, you know, a vaccine, in my terms, when I, when I first learned about the definition, are long-acting. You know, you need, you, need, you need one dose and a booster dose, and, you know, you're good to go. Um, and, you know, the, that's, that's my definition. You know, annual, annual vaccination is a therapy to me, an immunotherapy. It's not a vaccine. And that's, what, that's a little what we're looking at right now. Uh, where we're at right now, we are at the preclinical phase. So the preclinical phase is the blueprint for the clinical phase, you know, and uh, our first, first concern is, is safety and then efficacy of this vaccine. And we can plan to do the utmost before we even think about uh, clinical trials, because, you know, I'd like to remind people that, you know, uh, putting an unknown entity into a human being can be a very dangerous thing. Mm. That human being life is at risk. You're putting something unknown and you're waiting to see what happens, you know, and uh, we refuse to take chances on uh, human life. Yeah. We will not be uh, put under pressure to do so. Everybody is, I understand, quite anxious and they want this pandemic. I hate this pandemic. I want it to be over with. But, you know, at, not at the, at, at the sacrifice of somebody else's well-being. Yeah. And that's our position right now. We're right. careful. Well, we are moving at a rapid pace. All right, so let's let's focus a little bit on what it is that you and your team, I, I mean, you've got a partnership that's taking place. It's with a Danish yeah. biotechnology company, Immunotech. Yeah. And yeah. from what we've been told, you're using what is called nanotechnology to ensure that the vaccine goes yeah. via the bloodstream to the lungs. And like you say, it's, a, it's yeah. hoping to be a one-source vaccination. You don't have to come every single year. Give us a little bit more detail. Yeah. Well, I would, I would say, look, so, so um, without giving away, I, I will, without giving away too much of uh, intellectual property, which I will address quite soon, uh, intellectual property, and we, 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 we are a bit secretive as well, but for good reason, I'll divest that. Without saying that, we, we are using the nanotechnology and the immune-enhancing design in collaboration with the Danish who are experts in finding the right target. So, uh, you know, together we're going to find, we've got the targets for the S, the E, and the M, and the N protein, all four proteins combined with a vaccine, uh, you know, that starts in the bloodstream. And in the bloodstream, that's where you stimulate the antibodies, right? And then it travels to the lung and to the, to the uh, alveoli of the lung, and uh, it sits there and it makes a T-cell response. Mm -hmm. So remember that the lung is the site of infection. That's the site of replication. That's where COVID-19 lives, you know. So by the time it gets to the bloodstream, it's replicated at quite a high rate. Yeah. Well, listen. So it's better to stop before it gets there, yeah. Keep us updated. Uh, I know that you can't talk too much about it, as you have been saying, but it certainly is uh, yes. quite interesting. And the fact that this is happening right here in South Africa and yes. uh, in our uh, newly named Tebeja, which is, uh, which is quite interesting. So we'll definitely follow up and yes, find out what we're doing. Yes, that was one big Okay. Fantastic. Uh, just, thank, you for, thank you for informing me that. Could I make uh, just one or please? two points, please? Yeah, go for um, it. Yeah. We are, we are only two entities involved in this. Uh, we're not affiliated with any government 
foreign or domestic, uh, not any political organization or financial institution or any private funder as well. We're completely independent, we're self-funded. And, um, you know, this makes te technology licensing and intellectual property not a problem for us and for the people of South Africa. Um, you know, when it comes time to manufacture, we don't have to ask anybody permission. We can simply start. Mm. And, um, you know, trials have been done on these vaccines. I mean, people get excited about the trials, but clinical trials have been done in the country. And, um, you know, they go overseas and uh, we're on the short end of the waiting list before we can get the vaccine. That's not the case yet. That is definitely not the case. Yeah. And um, finally, I'd like to say that we've been working on this for quite some time. And, um, you know, we abide by strict ethical and scientific principles. And that's the, they, and it's, it's, it's by scientists. All the, all, all, ten of, all the ten of the main guys are scientists. And, um, you know, we're here to do good science and, and make something that works. So we're, you know, that's, a, that's the integrity that we bring to the table. Councilman, quickly, so, what's your timeline? What yeah. is the timeline on this? Right. So preclinical, you know, um, I have said that uh, conservatively, at a worst case scenario, 10 months, I'm not going to um, give false hope and say it's going to be quicker. I predict it will be quicker, but I can say 10 months. But, you know, it's mother nature that we're dealing with. And, uh, you know, it's not subject to laws or shareholder quarterly earnings mother nature does things in its time so we have to um we will have a period of preclinical testing for around 10 months mm. and um i'm pretty sure that we, we, you know we, we're going to get a result we've done enough work to see that we'll get an antibody in ctl and um you know i we're, we're looking forward to telling you more uh when we are able to tell you more because sure. um you know it, it, it's 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 actually quite a obvious design and you'll see that soon enough. All right, Councillor, thanks for talking to us. So, Councillor Chen, so good from GenLab, uh, talking to us about uh, 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 further testing that's happening locally uh, on this, uh, this locally produced vaccine called Shantivax. So, yeah, we brought you the information. You make up your mind now. Let's quickly get your news headlines at 7.